All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we'll, we're going to have a really great day of programming, and you know you're going to stick around till the closing ceremonies because we have all that swag to give away. <laughs> so <laughs> you better come back. We got some sweatshirts and stuffed animals and such. Um, I'd like to introduce our first guest today. We got the Dora crew here, and they're going to take you through uh, some practices, uh, and it looks like some science. So I'm going to hand it over to them. Enjoy, and we'll see you later. Thank you. Hey, Nathan. Uh, what brings you to CDCon today? Oh, Amanda, I've got it in a really bad way. I just, I can't ship any of my code. All the tests are failing. Everyone keeps telling me no. It's, it's giving me migraines. Okay, let me, let me take a look here. Well, I see here you're using the black box lens. That might be why you're having such a hard time seeing. Yeah, I can only see half of what's going on any time. Okay. But that is a little bit better. Dave, can you help us by putting up on the screen? Let's see what you see now. Nate. Ooh, oh, yeah. It's my IDE. Oh, boy, that is, that's my happy place. I love being in my IDE, but the rest of the stuff is it's really, really blurred. I don't, is that version control? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So we've seen this before. I think you might be a little myopic. So why don't we try the sysadmin lens and see if okay. that helps you out. Sysadmin, huh? Oh, yeah, I see infrastructure and a, a lot of acronyms and letters that I, I just don't understand. What, what is this gibberish? You definitely, I think, have a case of ops blindness. Oh, all right. So before we get to, I think we've got an idea of how we can help you, but before we yeah. get there, let's try one more lens just to see how it goes. Okay. Um, it's our security lens. Let's see. Lens. So. Oh, oh, everything's red. Stop, stop. No, no, no I, don't, oh. I don't like that at all. They okay. keep telling me to stop. I can't do anything, and uh, that lens doesn't work okay. very well. No. All right. Well, we've got one more lens for you to try. Okay. It kind of combines all of these together. Ooh. It's the Dora lens. The so Dora lens. Let's see how you do with the Dora lens. Now, what do you see? Ah, well, that is a little bit clearer for sure. So I see capabilities predict performance, which then predicts outcomes. Uh, it's very clear, but I'm not sure I understand it. All right. Dave, Dr. Dave, can you help Nathan learn how to use these DORA lenses? You bet, Dr. Amanda. So DORA is a research program, and mm. for over 10 years, we've been studying technology teams, looking at the ways that they deliver, develop, and operate software to find out how they can deliver value to their organization. Here on Dora.dev, your new favorite website, you'll find a, a summation of our research program. And this, this framework can really help guide improvement efforts. You'll see there are a number of capabilities here on the left. These are things that range from technical to cultural to process that you can refine and work on. Our research has shown that these are predictive of software delivery performance. And that performance can be measured using four simple metrics. That software delivery performance, in turn, is predictive of organizational performance and well-being of the people on your team. I see things are getting much, much more clear now, but there is a lot going on. Where do I start? Well, today we're going to start by giving you a baseline, and then you'll be able to move forward from there. All right. So let's start by taking you through the quick check. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. So for the application that you work on, mm -hmm. how long does it take you from the time you commit code to your version control until it gets into production? Oh, on my team, we work in sprints, and they're usually about two-week sprints, and we, uh, you know, so it's probably about two weeks that it takes. Okay, so we'll go with one week to one month. Okay. Now, how often are you deploying to production? Yeah, again, two-week sprints, so we deploy at the, well, at the end of every or every other sprint, if I'm being honest, so probably two to four weeks. Okay, so again, we'll go with between once per week and once per month. Mm -hmm. Now, when you deploy to production, what yeah. percentage of the time does that result in an uh-oh moment? So you've got to either roll back or push out a hot fix. What are you talking about? It works every time. Ooh. No, no, uh, uh, you want me to be honest, right? This yeah. is a safe space. Okay, good to know. Um, well, in truth, we roll back those pushes that we push out, uh, I'd say about a third of the time. 33% right. of the time, it works every time. Gotcha. That's it. Yes, yeah. I like that. And then, last but not least, so when mm -hmm. that does happen, doesn't happen very often, but when it does, how uh, long does it take you to recover from that? Oh, usually we can recover pretty quickly, say an hour or two. Okay. Great. All right. Dave. Well, let's see what our is results. This baseline? According to this DORA scoring system, you're getting about 5.7 out of 10. Yes! Wait, is 5.7 
good or is it bad? Well, it's somewhere in the middle. But more important than the absolute number is what we're going to do with this information uh, and how we're going to use this to guide improvement. You can see here on, on when we, the breakdown of the metrics that your stability metrics, the two on the bottom, are, are really doing pretty well, right? You're, you've got pretty high numbers on your change fail rate and your fail deployment recovery time. Where you're lagging is in your velocity metrics, lead time and deploy frequency, how long it takes you to get code to your users and how often you're doing it. So maybe there's opportunities to improve there. Well, my manager searcher says so, and uh, he always wants me to speed up, speed up, ship more, ship more. Uh, but I run into all of these challenges everywhere I go. So how do I make it better? Well, we've got lots of great resources for you. In addition to this quick check tool on our site, you'll find this capability catalog. So for every one of those capabilities, you'll find an article that talks about what it is, how to measure it, how to improve it, and some common pitfalls when you go down that journey. You'll also find um, our publications, including our flagship publication, the State of DevOps Report, which we've been publishing yearly for many years. Uh, is that what's right here? That's the one right I there. I see that, some here. That, that's yeah. what it's like when you take it out of the internet and put it into a physical piece of paper. Wild. Hmm. And you'll find a, a, a catalog of resources including tools, books, and even some fun graphics that you can print out and share with your team. I mean, this is all great, and I, I feel like there's something here that can help me, but there's no way I can do this on my own. You well, certainly can't. Yeah, and you're lucky you don't have to do this alone because there are thousands of practitioners in the DORA community of practice that are here to help you. And so, since you were such a great patient today, I'm gonna let you pick out Adora Community of Practice. Oh, yay, I love stickers. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thanks, Dora. I love these new Dora lenses. But I do have one question. Yes. Can I put my glasses back on? You can. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all for coming to our little uh, skit here to help introduce you to Dora. Uh, my name's Nathan Harvey. I, I lead up the Dora program within Google Cloud. We have some time today for questions, so if you have some questions, start thinking of them. I, I don't want them yet, but think of them and build up that courage to raise your hand and ask a question very soon. So the way that we conduct this research every year is that we run an annual survey. We go out into the world and ask a ton of different questions. I mean, not a ton. It'll take you about 15 minutes to take this survey. But we really recommend that you take this survey because it gives you and your team a moment to reflect on some of those capabilities and practices that you're doing. And each year, we focus on different areas that you might be encountering in your own daily work. Amanda, what's one of the things that you're excited that we're looking into? I'm excited that we're looking into developer experience. We talk a lot about it in the community. We see it. You know, it's, it's a hot, one of those hot words that we see everywhere. But I'm really looking forward to what does that mean in practice? What are teams actually seeing? What are individuals seeing? And how is that affecting their daily life? So I'm excited to see the outcomes from this year's survey. Awesome. And Dave, what about you? You know, another hot topic is uh, platform engineering, um, where a lot of organizations are starting to adopt platform engineering techniques to improve velocity, code quality, and compliance, and looking at how can this help them get better at that. And well, those questions sound kind of familiar. These are the kinds of questions that Dora's been studying for years. So this year in our survey, we're asking a number of questions and we're gonna analyze the results to see how platform engineering is helping organizations deliver value. Yeah, and one of the things that I'm excited about is our deepening exploration into artificial intelligence. In fact, last year, we asked some questions about AI and you can find some of the results in here. I'll come to you in a minute for a question about those. But um, this year, we really want to understand deeper how you and your teams are experimenting with AI today. What value is it giving you? How is it impacting your overall software delivery performance, your team's well-being, your organizational performance, and so forth? Speaking of AI, Amanda, what did we find last year? Well, I mean, we found that it was early days, right? So we, we saw that it was attributing to kind of improved well-being. We were enjoying kind of experimenting with it, but we weren't seeing the impact of it quite yet on a lot of the tasks that we asked about. But I thought one of the best findings from last year was how code review speed, those teams that have faster code review speed have 50% better software delivery. So I'm excited to, to look into and, and see how AI in our IDEs, is that gonna help us impact that? Can more teams get better at code review speed? And I also think it's going to be interesting about documentation. For the last several years, Michelle, who's out here in the audience, has been leading the efforts that we're looking into in documentation. She's giving a talk tomorrow at three-ish. Three -ish. <laughs> um, and I highly encourage you to attend there. But I'm curious, you know, part of when we're using it for kind of code prompting, code completion, we're putting in, you know, 
in code documentation, and I'm curious, will that help us get better at providing more context for the next person that picks up that piece of code? That's really cool. So I want to turn to the audience. What questions do you have? What can we answer for you about Dora? Yeah, all right, I'm going to come out to you. So I'm curious about looking at lead time as a difference between code commit versus when the business gets the request. Yeah, uh, I, I could start on that one. So um, there, there's a lot of, of, of actually like debate among the community and a great place to bring that question is to the Dora community, honestly, where this is an active topic. Uh, a, a few answers to that. So the, the question is, um, what's the difference in, in lead time between do we look at when a code is committed? Do we look at when it, the idea is started? Where does that timer start? Um, a, a couple things I'll mention. Um, one is that it's most important that it's valuable to you. So, you know, everyone, every team can have a different definition, and that's kind of okay. Uh, what matters is that you're learning from that, that you're looking at trends and exploring that. Uh, another thing to look at is that there's uh, a kind of a difference between ideation, uh, what, uh, what Jez Humble, who's one of the, the founders of the research, calls the messy front end, um, and then actually working on it as code. So for the sake of, of consistency, for the sake of, of the area of the, of the pipeline that can really be optimized in a really rigorous way, we tend to start with code being written. Um, again, there's room for interpretation. It's often better to go with what's easiest to measure rather than what's most technically precise because really the work comes in when you start looking at those measurements and then thinking about what are we going to do about it? What do we do about the trends? Where can we find bottlenecks um, and improve them? Other thoughts? Great. We have another question over here. Yep. Thanks. So I work on a developer infrastructure team and one question I have is like during your skit, it seemed like you were taking this from the perspective of like a product engineering team. And I'm wondering if there are any particular specific learnings within the kind of Dora, I guess, like uh, knowledge s sphere, like amount of knowledge within all the Dora research that might indicate like, are there any, is there anything different from Dora or anything specific within Dora that might be more useful to developer productivity teams that are really focused on how do we help all of our engineers as opposed to just one product engineering team. You want me to take that? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I think, I think um, one of the things that as you're a developer experience platform and like you're trying to help your developers, how do you know that you're helping them? One way of course is to go and ask them, are, are you, are you happier? Is this making you more productive? And that, that I definitely recommend that. But then I also think that you can use those Dora metrics if you've set a baseline on how is that application team doing today. Now we're introducing new things to them. How are those metrics changing over time? And you, and you have to recognize that as you introduce new things, sometimes that's going to immediately slow people down. You might have to give them a minute to get used to those new ways of working, and then you'll see those really start to pay off. And the, the, the thing that I love about Dora, frankly, is that that method, that process of setting a baseline, having some guardrails in place to validate or invalidate the changes that you're making, that's kind of universal. We can use that for platform engineering. We can use it for developer experience. We can use it for AI and what we're doing with AI on our own teams. And I just want to say additionally, I think that one of the you know, foundations of the research that we found, it's not just technical practices, it's cultural and process. So I think digging into some of the capabilities around learning and um, making work visible and, and really the culture of the team and asking some questions about how they feel about the culture of their team will be incredibly useful. And then also last year, we really dug into user centrism. And I think that'd be another great place to, that you could find some value. And I'll just add that the Dora knowledge sphere is currently under construction. It's a massive orb in orbit around Earth. And <laughs> everyone here is invited. It's kind of like Elysium. You can come up with us. That's right. All right, Anna has a question. Hi, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, okay, so congratulations on 10 years of Dora Research. That's awesome. And what's uh, the benefit of that is that business leadership is starting to recognize that as a buzzword and perhaps a panacea. And so I was hoping you guys could provide some tips for how to manage expectations about implementing Dora Research at your organizations and to better communicate to the business about why it's valuable, but how to manage expectations. Yeah, that's a great question. We, we hear this question a lot. How do I get my leaders bought on to the idea of Dora metrics? So Dave, how do I get my leadership bought into that? 
How do you get your leadership? Well, I think you start by having a conversation and using their language, right? Your, your leadership has metrics, has KPIs, and they want to invest money or some money <laughs> to optimize those KPIs. What we need to do is, is have a, a conversation with them where we talk about how the work we do is going to be contributing to that. There is, however, potentially a pitfall when we introduce something like Dora Metrics. And Nathan, Amanda, how do we manage that? So I think that's when you're bringing it to leadership, the slide, I don't know if you want to pull it back up, but when we look at that all the way to the right about how when we improve software delivery performance, it's going to improve our organizational performance and our well-being. Yeah. But I think the software delivery performance, those four key metrics, those are meant for the team level. And so it's really important that if you're bringing it to leadership or if leadership brings it to you, that it's very clear that it's only meaningful and useful when it's used at the team level and you can't compare teams against each other. That's not helpful. It's really just meant for that application team or software team to be able to use that to identify what capability can they focus on to improve. Yeah, yeah. this is an iterative experimental framework hence the coats. Um, and so I think we need to you know, engage our leadership in that process more than necessarily focusing on specific metrics. Yeah, so in, in other words, like if your leaders are asking you, uh, I wanna see those Dora metrics, the answer is probably, no you don't. <laughs> what, what you wanna see is value that we're delivering. And, and what we're going to use to measure how well are we delivering that value is those metrics, but they're really for us. They're not necessarily for you. And if they insist, I think it's a yes and. I'll give you some metrics. I'm also gonna give you a story about what my, this team has been able to achieve and how they've been able to spread that success. Absolutely. All right, one more question. Great, get me all my exercise today. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, I'm glad you brought the slide up because you see, like, we're talking about the green boxes, right, quite a bit. But obviously the stuff that's supporting the green boxes to the left, those are things that a lot of my teams are like, hey, they, you know, they have these great ideas, they want to do this. And so one of the challenges that we have is like, well, where do we invest our time in those left areas? How do you then connect that? I know there's lines here, but how do you, what's the mechanism to connect those thoughts and ideas to the hey, we think we have a hypothesis that by doing this on the left, that green box and that particular you know, lead time change, whatever, will improve. How do we, how do, we do that? Well, I think that comes to culture and having a leadership that allows you the autonomy to experiment. To, and, and I think by communicating that to your leadership, we want to focus on this capability. We have a hypothesis. It's going to improve our metrics. You go and you run that experiment, and then you come back. And maybe it doesn't, but you communicate, we did this. It didn't have the impact we expected. Now we're going to try something different. Yeah, and I, I, I think that as you look at this, as I sort of alluded to, there's a lot going on there, right? And your team will probably look at that and say, yes, we need to improve all of that. What they can't do today is improve all of that. So the, the sort of process that we use is we'll bring a cross-functional team together and we'll have discussion about some of those capabilities, trying to identify which one is your bottleneck. Because as, as an example, sometimes we see, you see version control is on there, right? If we talk to a team and they say, 98% of our artifacts are all in version control, but boy, we gotta get that last 2% across the line. And then you look at test automation and they have no test automation. We're like, all right, well, if you get those last 2% across the line, you're not gonna change anything. So let's focus in on test automation and give you the time and space to like build up that practice. And then you go back to your boss and you say, well, boss, look at this, look at this chart. It tells me that if we get better at test automation, it's gonna improve our software delivery performance, which is gonna give us two more earnings per share uh, when it comes time to the quarterly earnings. And so I'm gonna write some more tests, we're gonna have some more profit. That's the story you tell. All right, we have time for one more question. One more question. Uh, what techniques do you guys use to ensure that measurements uh, either within an organization over time or from one organ organization to another are consistent? And how does that affect the validity of your comparisons and your benchmarks? Uh, so the way that we collect our data, first of all, for the report is surveys every year. We know, we know that when you read that question, how long does it take for code to be committed until code is deployed in production? You're gonna interpret that slightly different than I am and slightly different than he is and than she is. But the beauty of that survey is we get enough answers from the worldwide community that we can trust in that data. Now, comparing it year over year is interesting because of the way that we run the survey. It's all anonymous. 
If you took the survey last year and you take it again this year, I have no way of knowing that it's you again, and I certainly can't tie that back to you. This is why you have to take sort of our, uh, we're almost checking the pulse of the industry today. How do you take those similar methods and apply it within your team? And then when it comes to how do you make sure that you're consistently measuring that across different teams within your org, as Dave say, stated earlier, maybe you don't. But it is important that for each team, you're writing down and, and being very clear on how we're making those measurements. And the thing that you really want to track over time are what lessons are you learning? What improvement are you making to those? I'd much rather celebrate a team that has improved those metrics by 20% than the team that has the highest ratings on those metrics. Does that make sense? I, I trust that, I, actually, I trust that no one in the org knows the metric. We have to ask a bunch of people because even, on, even if we're on the same team and we see this happen all the time, how long does it take? What are the steps involved from code commit to code production? Uh, there's many different steps and most of us have, have that first blinder I have on, right? That, <laughs> a black box. I can only see half of the process. So getting together a cross-functional team to have that discussion is the best place to start. And I think we've seen teams that are using dashboards and using actually using the system data to have the metrics, that at the team level, they need to have that conversation. They identify how they're measuring it. And I've seen across organizations where they've actually gone back and changed for that team, they start to measure it slightly different so that it reflects how that team can improve. All right, and with that, thank you so much for coming. Anyone that asked a question, please do come take a report. And when there's reports left, because there will be, if you'd like one, please take one home with you. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you in the Dora community. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.